and you've been around Ant for a little while now. What have you noticed from him in terms of becoming a tone setter and, and kind of leading the way a little bit more this season? He's kind of realizing how impactful he can be for us on both sides of the ball when it comes to winning basketball games. Um, he's finally starting to realize that this year specifically. That's, that's right. We're back. We are Ooh. back live in action. Live I in know. action. Our, well, I don't know if you would really actually consider this live uh, because, well, it's live. We're live. Let's, let's, let, the, let's let, let the audience settle down a little bit here before I get into what I want to go into here. Thank you. Thank you. We are Fuzz Jock Radio once again. Uh, my name is Fuzzy. I'm one of the Hess here in uh, Minnesota, and we have another Minnesota Hess all the way up the hill from me, and their name is... Oh, hello. I'm Jay Mez. And then we have a Hess all the way out in uh, California, L.A., Los Angeles, and their name is... C-Dubs. And then we have a Hess, a special Hess, all... Well, not, not too special because they're a regular, a, a beloved regular, if you will, uh, all the way out in Seattle, and their name is. That's right, beloved regular Eric Blake. That's great. Here again for the first time. Okay, so let's just get right into it, guys. Um, I, w- I was thinking about how tonight's episode is all of us are remote, right? We're, none of mm-hmm. us are in studio together we're all doing this separately so if there the audience if there's any mistakes or anything that happens let's just blame it on all of us being remote not doing this in a long time it's not it's not any it's not my fault right that's it's also on purpose it and it's, on, on and it's on purpose yeah you're right because that's that's what we do around here we yep. we take mistakes and make them into gold you know like golden tidbits of uh humor and, and stuff like that and uh, with where, purpose. Where was I going with this? With purpose. I'm, I'm going somewhere with purpose. That's 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 what we're talking about. And then what I'm saying is here. Now follow me. Okay. If none of us are live in studio together, are we really live on air? It's like know? is. Do you, do you hear a tree? If there's no one around, does a tree make a noise when it, it falls? It's kind of like that. Yeah. Or there's another yeah. one where what does a one hand clapping sound like? And exactly. It sounds like this. That kind of or sounds like if you get weird. transported in Star Trek. Yeah, that's exactly where I'm going with this, Breb. Is it really you on the other side? Are you dying and then being recreated? Are they since they're taking those molecules apart? That's how you transport people, right? You like teleport people. You you take apart their molecules and then put them back together. Are they this really the same it person? Turned into a buffer signal. It's kind of like that, you know, like James. Every seven years. You like you what what happens all every, your cells regenerate right, right? like you, you shed all of your skin so are you really yeah. the same person so that, that's what i'm proposing mm-hmm. tonight right now while we're going through this episode this episode or this uh podcast is not a repeat is not a philosophical 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 uh, uh podcast <laughs> philosophical philosophical what Philosophical. what is it Philosophical. Phil- Phil- a silly fakical. Okay. One, one of those. Uh, it's not one That's of those amazing. type of podcasts where you think about things. But keep that in the back of your mind that we are remote and we not might not be live. Right? So with that, we are a sports podcast. And once again, my name is Fuzzy. Lo and behold. Let's, maybe we should just... Uh, <laughs> let's just do this. Rewind. We'll just start this podcast over. My name is Fuzzy. <laughs> I am one of your Hess. We have a Hess all the way in Mankato, and their name is... I'm James. And we have a Hess all the way out in California, and their name is... c And we have a Hess all the way out in Seattle. We also like to call them a Breb. That's beloved regular Eric Blake, back again for the first time. And we are Fuzz Talk Radio, Fuzz Jock Radio, with one of them, <laughs> one of them, right? 
Uh, yeah. Also, All of them. Yeah, we're a sports podcast, and we like to start this podcast off with the note of how we were doing this last week. Jameis, how you're, you're waving at me. How, how, how have you, how have you oh. been? Well, I've been I've been decent. Um, have been better. Mm-hmm. But uh, no, I was waving because my camera went all blurry. You know, I, I wanted to make sure you guys saw me with clarity. Yeah, yeah. So what's going on? Definition. How you been? Oh, man, just uh, winter's getting to me a bit. So um, trying to recognize the the funky slump that makes. Uh, so mm-hmm. and and finding ways to bring myself out of that. That's good. That's good. It's good to recognize. It's good to recognize. Uh, see you mm-hmm. how, how have you been? I've been good. My family is in town, or my parents, I should say. Uh, good. They are currently above me, uh, above the studio. Uh, hello, uh, mom and dad. C Dub's mom. Hi, and dad. mom. Hi, dad. Uh, hopefully, they're listening. Uh, they are. Otherwise, you're gonna be able to call them out later on when you go back oh, up. You'll gonna... be able to be like, mom and dad. What did I say? And they'll be like, I don't know. They're gonna be like, you talked about sports, and I'll be like, damn, they got me. Ah, <laughs> uh, Breb. Uh, how, how have you been? We haven't seen you in a while. We, we haven't had it you as a beloved a regular. You've been doing really uh, good since segments. Since last time. Sorry, yeah. Thank you so much for letting me do those. Uh, yeah, since the last time I was on, I've been working on an electronic music album. Oh. And nice. Uh, That's those exciting. Little segments for you. What's this music album? What you got going on? You want to talk about that at all? Well, I'm still working on it, and I'm hoping to release it soon, either in parts or as a great big drop. But um, stay tuned for news on that. I've got some stuff on a band camp right now, which is just stuff I did for D&D cool. games, and then some stuff I did for uh, way in the past that I just dug up. And it, Well, I did it back in high school, but it inspired me to start doing this electronic music album because I was like, oh yeah, I kind of had an ear for some of that, and it's really fun to make. So yeah, I'm like... 30 tracks deep into this project. Wow. 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 Very good. That's awesome. And uh, you said that it'll be on Bandcamp, but you, people will be able to find the uh, link on the on our Fuzz Talk Radio Discord, right? Of course. I'll show you the link to my Bandcamp, and then I'm sure I'll plug myself in a 90 seconds at some point when I actually have an album to share. Oh, sure, sure. And we'll, we'll spread the word through the podcast as well. But if you ever listeners are looking for ways to keep updated on fuzz talk re- radio and fuzz jock radio radio related things and since and since we're not on social medias other than discord you should find our discord and you can just go to the website fuzztalkradio.com and uh, click on join our discord so hey i just did a little drop for our discord yeah oh i see the button right there nice i was here we easy fuzzy. to find my week? Oh, wow. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm happy you asked because my week, uh, oh boy. <laughs> it's not, yeah, it's oh, been no. the, yeah, it hasn't been the fun. So I lost the game. So let's just move over to. Are you ready for some football? Football, football, football. Uh, Vikings, uh, we know last week lost, which, yeah. which, you know, Whatever we talked about it, we, we we we. I was gonna say it sucks, but I'm gonna re, I'm gonna I'm reminding myself that it doesn't suck because we are able to look forward to next season, look mm-hmm. forward to the different trades and uh, firings and stings that are gonna happen uh, th- be, be, before the next season, and we've already have some pretty. Uh, I mean, I don't want to say exciting news because it's not fun for uh, this person. But they, uh, well, they, they 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 already did some firings. Yes. And uh, they fired right away uh, Kirk Cousins. Oh, I wish. No, they didn't. No, no, they didn't. The quarterback oh, is still. That, that is exciting news. The quarterback is still going to be our quarterback throughout the next season. Uh, they, they mentioned that they're dedicated to Kirk and making sure yeah. that he's happy. Uh, okay. so that, that's the thing. And then they, the, uh, fired the head coach of the defense. He was the head coach yes. of the defense, right? Ed Donatello, yep. right? Yep. Donatello. Don, not Donatello. Donatello. Don, Donatello. 
Uh, Does machine. Was this his first year with the Vikings? Yes. So he was one of the new regimes, huh? Mm Mm-hmm. And he didn't do well. He was brought on by the head coach. He didn't do well, uh, obviously. No. We had a lot of good defensive players who played like dog crap this year, and I kind of feel like it wasn't their fault, but we'll see. Did I send you guys the notes this time? Uh, I did did not. No. I thought I took a picture of it. Okay. (laughs) I'm like, man, man, I'm like, man, it seems like these guys don't know exactly where I'm going with this. But, okay, notes. Uh, Full disclosure, we're not live. We do write some notes. We're not live. Well, are we? That's the question. Are we live? Maybe I'll... Are we live? Maybe that will be a question later. Uh, Firings and stayings. Okay, so... So, it does lead us to a lot of questions of who are we going to keep from our defense after they played this last season so rough. Um. Yeah. How so? How does that work? Like so? Like, okay, we got we decided the scapegoat for this last season was the head coach of the de- defense. The defense is right. the reason why uh, they didn't want they they didn't do well. Now, if they get rid of the defensive head coach, who decides to keep what players from here on out until they get the next head coach? Or are they going to wait for that head coach, the new head coach, first to decide to make those firings or hirings? The general them? manager will make those decisions. Of the player Because it's about pay decisions? more than it's about play. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So, That's a good question, though. So I kept track of four major players who are going to cost us a lot next year. When, when the, when the when when they want to know when they normally would they normally ask the head coach who they want to keep or not or is it just about pay? They have some input, but the final decision is always the GM. So the GMs decide in the players, and then the coach is like, "Okay, this is the player base that I have to work with." Mm-hmm. Okay, uh-huh. interesting. Because they like the GM picks who they draft. Coach usually gets input, but does not get to pick. And the GM's m- looking at numbers, like like mostly yeah. dollar amounts. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So the GM's so, looking at four players. Yeah, there's four major players we have on the defense who we've had. Some of them we've had for a while, and one of them was the guy we got last year, who was a big star but did not play very well, or at least not to his standard. And uh, they're going to cost us a lot of money next season. So these are the four major ones I wrote down. Harrison Smith, who's been on the team forever. That's $20 million next year on a cap hit. Okay. And that's a lot for an aging safety. Okay. Once again, uh, we or not once again, we realized last week that player salaries and team salaries are different between leagues yeah so like the, the mlb league has way more salary cap than an N- uh, nhl team well they have no salary cap okay oh then, so they then pay people that more. as well uh so does that make it so that the nhl and the nfl with salary caps are closer in numbers they ha- no because there's less money in the nhl okay so then what i'm hmm. what i'm getting at here is I don't know what the when 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 we're saying numbers f- for NFL players I don't know how big or small that is because I don't know the breadth of the of the, of the contracts you know what I, is, does that make sense How big was Correa's contract originally for the San Francisco no, Giants no, just no. just it'll help me even this out quick That was 11 years no 12 years for 350 Okay, no. so Mahomes, I think, signed for nine years for four hundred million. Okay, Mahomes is an NFL quarterback. Yes, for the Kansas City Chiefs. So nine years for how much? I think four hundred million. Four hundred mil, Oof. and then Korea was eleven years for eleven years for three fifty. Three originally three fifty. So that's close. And those it's are close. Those are the top. Those are the well, top paid. That's just an idea of how big and how the little differences with the almost same amounts. Okay, so then we are ta- we are talking major league baseball terms of 
million uh, of uh, money. Yeah. So Harrison Smith is twenty million. You said about nineteen. But the difference is that there's a cap hit in football, so he can get paid so much, but his cap hit can be a lot more. Okay, I guess what I'm trying to get at is what <laughs> what is. Like it is nineteen million in NFL terms. Is that a lot of money, or is that a little bit of money? So nineteen million would be how much Kirk Cousins is going to get paid next year. So Kirk is going to make twenty million next year, and Harrison Smith's cap hit. That's not how much he's going to get paid. That's how much he's going to get hit on the cap is for the same amount as the quarterback. That's a lot of money. For not a quarterback. For not a quarterback. It's, it's big for a cap hit. For a secondary player, is what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, he's a linebacker, right? Safety. Oh, he's a safety. Oh. How much do other safeties make? I wonder. And so then we also have Eric Kendricks is on the block for $11 million. Yep. Okay. And he's you know been on the team for a him. long time. And how how many million dollars do we Eric. have to work with? What, what's that, Eric? Oh, I just said they should keep him because oh, his man. name's Eric. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. So it's almost two hundred million is the total. Two hundred million. I'm writing that down too. Two hundred million. Okay. And there's fifty three players. Fifty three players. Do they have to split two hundred million between fifty three players. Does that include coaches and staff? No. Okay, just players. Or yes, does players. that include coaches? No, because no can, coaches or staff. Because correct me if I'm wrong. You can trade coaches, right? Yes. Okay. But they get guaranteed contracts. Oh boy, this is. So they NFL players do not get guaranteed contracts. So do, if you get cut, you don't get paid anymore. Do these players have unions? They do, but they don't have that as part of the union negotiations or oh, agreement. Jeez. Okay. 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 It's a bad thing in the NFL. So once again, we're going over. Why the NFL sucks. Yes. <laughs> okay. Do do do. So we have so what and what we're getting at is that we have four players that have very high contracts that uh, need to be re- renegotiated. They either need to renegotiate or cut them. Or because they're the, the this last year was their last was their last year on the contract. Well, these these are each have one more year at least. But this is how much it'll cost us if we kept them. Man. So that's yeah, a lot a of money. Of the total contract money, right? So, sounds like yeah. the new regime has a lot to work with here. Probably yeah, because this is also cutting. not what they're getting paid. This is what their cap hit this is. This kind of sounds so, like, like it's going Harrison back. Smith's not getting paid $20 million. It's kind He's of just going to hit our cap for $20 million. It seems like it's going back into my hand of the whole thoughts of... This is still Zimmer's team from last season. And the new regime is like, let's just try it out. Not even tr- not even f- fix anything because everybody's going to be under contract after after it anyways. So if we do well, then great. If we don't, then we can just get rid of everybody. They could. Hmm. Probably will. Uh, the stadium is the one of the uh, ugliest stadiums in America. Uh, not more more Vikings news. Who, who says yes. who? Did you see that? I saw that. That that was something that was in the notes. That's well, I don't know rude. if it's the ugliest. It says, in my opinion, but I think it looks like the in, sand crawler from the Jawas. In your opinion, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you're you're, you're a Minnesotan out in L.A. Right. So, so like you're telling everybody, yo, our our stadiums. Not that ugly. Have you seen it in person? Yeah, it looks yeah. like a cool Star Wars vehicle. Yeah. yeah. I think it looks cool. I don't think it, it looks beautiful, but it looks cool. No, it looks a bit, bit harsh. The ugliest building in the world is the Scottish Parliament building in Edinburgh, Scotland. Uh, US, <laughs> and the U.S. Bank Stadium is the 12th ugliest in the world. Wow. Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah. According to bringmethenews.com. I don't well, like bring me the Take the news, the news down, away because no. I don't want that news. So there's that news. Uh, there's also the news of uh, since the Vikings lost, we just, we realized that there is a curse going on. Do you know what curse it is? 
Uh-huh. Kirk Cousins. No team has lost to Kirk Cousins and gone to the pl- gone to play in the Super Bowl because uh the Bills lost last uh this last week. The the Bills beat the Vikings and then they were headed to the Super Bowl and then lost. And no team has lost to Kirk or what was it again? Yeah, you can't if you lose to Kirk in the season, you ain't going to no Super Bowl. No team has lost to Kirk Cousins. And gone to play in the Super Bowl. Also, no team has played with Kirk Cousins and gone to the Super Bowl. Ooh, Ooh burn. Wow. That's really good. That's a good one. Curse Cousins. <laughs> so That's a different curse. <laughs> so that's a thing, too. Brad, do, you, uh, do you have, do you have uh, sports out in Seattle? Boy, do we have sports in Seattle. Seattle sports did really well this year. I was looking up some facts and realized that if the Kraken, our hockey team, we'll get into them a little later as well. If uh, they go to the playoffs, every Seattle professional sports team, except for the Sounders, will go to their playoffs. Wow. Uh, some already have uh, Mariners, Seahawks, the Seattle Storm. Uh, they all went to their semifinals, wild card, or divisional. And then the Seawolves, the rugby team, they went to the rugby super bowl basically and hmm. they lost but um really it's really good crazy year for seattle sports oh boy we Dio had sports. um three rookies in our sports all made their uh pro bowl all a team so we've got julio rodriguez on the mariners Marik woolen on the seahawks and maddie veneers on the kraken hmm. just a wild Wild crop of athletes out here. Oh. Before we move on to uh, the story of Daniel Jones, yeah, I wanted to bring up. So we were talking about coaches having guaranteed contracts. Yeah, sure. So they, the Arizona Cardinals, fired their coach this year, and they just hired him recently, and they gave him a really big contract. Was he the one that was playing video games? No, that's their quarterback. Okay. Ah. Okay. He was the one who was playing video games. But anyway, so they fired him. Yep. So he bought a one-way ticket to Thailand. And teams are calling him up to interview for jobs. And he said, no, thank you. I'm going to make like $5 million a year for doing nothing. I'm just going to sit out here in Thailand and take wait, in the free money. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yep. So this coach has a guaranteed contract. And is, he... he that uh, he coached for this team. What team was he coaching for? Arizona Card- Cardinals. The Cardinals. Oh boy, the Cardinals. What? And then they fired him. And since even though they fired him, he's still guaranteed money. Mm-hmm. All yep. of it. All of it. All no, the money all they promised it. him, he will get. Wow. No matter what. And then and then he went down to Thailand. He just bought a one way ticket to Thailand. And it's then, so smart. And then, it's like really low cost of living, and you've got this massive amount coming. He, he's he doesn't. Gonna, he's gonna be fine. Yeah, he doesn't need to work ever again. No, he's good to go. Good job, buddy. Oh man, that makes <laughs> me really happy for him. Way to go, Cardinals. Yeah, good job, Cardinals. You know, supporting those con- guaranteed contracts too. That's that's great. Uh, there should be more businesses like that, right? We got some breb. We got some more breb news. Uh, what was uh, because we we figured out daniel jones is that what is that what his name was the legend of daniel jones the legend of daniel yeah, jones I, I sent you something earlier okay let's see here if i can play this without making a mistake again oh yeah this should be good okay oh come on mouse it wasn't good to be honest dad what's a beloved regular haha <laughs> Well, Ginger, when a podcast loves a guest very much, they have them on at least once a season. Even if their opinions are unpopular, their taste is warped, and sometimes their audio input isn't that great. And what do they call the time that someone like that is allotted? Allotted? Good word, Ginger. Well, they call that... The longest 90 seconds of your life! Presented by Beloved Regular Eric Blake here on Fuzz Talk Radio, a Fuzz Talk Radio production. Hello, that beep means we are recording. Hello, crowd, this is me, Beloved Regular Eric Blake, back again for the first time. Let's 
get that early simmer once again and we'll get right into it. Go ahead and find your seats. Thank you so much. Hello, Fuzzy and fellow Hests. Great episode last week. I actually did some digging for you, and it turns out that Daniel Jones sounds like a folk ballad name because it was a folk ballad. Uh, What follows is a recording I dug up from the Library of Congress, really tucked away like they didn't want anyone to find it. Uh, Let her rip. Is your devil box recording? All right, this is Gil McGinty, the ballad of Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones was a low-down guy I knew. A giant of a man. Said he lived under a witch's curse. Also had a load of apple hooch. Slap your mommy, but back to the curse. It said all those who carry the name Daniel Jones shall be cursed. It is said one will be a governor who dies of pneumonia. It is said one will be a Mormon who dies of gangrene. It is said one will form a band called Savage Garden and then end up in real estate. It is said one could break the curse if they win a Super Bowl. But I don't see that happening. Alright, let's go. Daniel Jones Jones. is a cursed, cursed man. The longest 90 seconds of your life. Presented by beloved regular Eric Blake here on Fuzz Talk Radio, a Fuzz Talk Radio production. Next week on Longest 90 Seconds of Your Life. He got into the Library of Congress somehow. I want to see Dan in my office right now. It would appear that yes, in a self-indulgent move, he is on the show tonight. I'm on the show tonight? Hi, Eric. Hi, Eric. Oh my god. I think we just blew the lid off. I can't believe you got into the Library of Congress. Oh, I can believe it. I I can absolutely The security is so lax. Yeah, I I mean, it's Brad we're talking about, right? Some unprecedented it's a library. Oh. They're librarians. Man. I, I speak their nerd language. Daniel Jones, you don't want to name your new baby after that guy. That's for sure. Man, that's, been a, that's a big cover up. Yeah. yeah we, we, we're blowing the. That's why we had Breb tonight, man, because yeah, he blow blew, blew the. He said he was going to blow the lid off it for quite a while, and we were. Done. We're done. Look, um, I didn't think there was anything to it, but I looked up the name Daniel Jones, and it's just a list of tragedy. <laughs> what a wild thing. <laughs> what a wild thing. That's awesome. Gil McGinty. Thank you again. He's a prophet. <laughs> um, <laughs> any more? Should we move on from NFL, guys? Oh, yeah. Let's go to the... I end. wish we would. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on to basketball, huh? Um, Buzz Talk Radio. The NBA theme. Here's an idea. It goes like this. Buzz Talk Radio. Uh, in Timberwolves news, we got a Carl update, and that's uh, that Carl update is uh, he's still hurt, and there's oh. an undetermined amount of time for him to come back. That's not great. Not good at all. Uh, Gobert oh. also still out, which is just Ooh. in just wild. It, he like he tried coming back and he's still hurt. Uh, he had to go out within the first quarter last week, so and he hasn't been back since. Which that's rough. Is is really rough. You know, remember how excited we were to have those two really tall guys in the post to be playing finally together and have D'Lo feeding them the ball from the point. So much promise in the roster, and then, you know. And then our, you know, I keep calling him our rookie uh, phenom, um, but he's not a rookie anymore. It's his second year uh, ant. And then McDaniel's on the wing, and it's going to be great. And it, um, fortunately. Yeah, the, both both their big men hurt right, pretty much right away in the season, which mm-hmm. makes it uh, it's a one hundred percent ants team now. Uh, I miss Pat Beverly. I miss Pat Beverly too. Uh, Pat, <laughs> Pat Bev was able to provide uh, a f- you know some leadership uh, to the team last year, and then there doesn't seem like there's any leadership happening. However. Now that the two big men are down, Ant has absolutely stepped up. Uh, mm-hmm. He's played every single game. He's the only player that's in the league that's played every single game. And from what we talked about the other week, it sounds like it is his 
idea and, or like he wants to and he's able to he he uh, scored 44 points last night and uh and yeah they've been winning i think that's that like the extra credit version of load management <laughs> yeah right he's getting more more points yeah. more yeah uh the i'm i'm doing this to say like Keep talking, guys. So, so while yeah. I look up something here, Ants, Ants, you know. forty-four <laughs> points are more than LeBron's been putting up, and he's been putting up record numbers. Like everyone's talking about LeBron recently being on a losing team, putting up tons of points, and yeah. Ants on a decent, okay-ish team, and he's putting up way better points. So just to put that in perspective, the new LeBron is now Ant. Nice, oh I bet. And then, yeah, it, put this in perspective too. When you look at the Timberwolves' record, they're twenty-four. Sure, they're twenty-four and twenty-five, but the Lakers are twenty-two and twenty-five. And we're comparing ourselves to the Lakers all the time, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Timberwolves or are, the Warriors or the Warriors, and yeah, they're twenty-three and twenty-four. So we're better than both. We're ninth place. They're tenth place, and uh, the Lakers are twelfth place. So. We did it. We're going to win the championship. Uh, we are. And unfortunately, they're not doing that well. But it is it is uh, Ant's team now. Now he can step I'm it up, and hopefully he can get his leadership going. And uh, when the two big men come through, they'll, it'll help Ant more than it will, like, compete against him. You know what I mean? I so so. Sometimes that, that can happen. Uh, should I, I hope they're okay. I yeah, I mean, I mean, they're hurt. They got an injury. They gotta yeah. They gotta heal up, right? That's I that. like the basketball section because I just get to sit back. Think about it. What if we had a Wouldn't that be great? We could have a basketball team. Look how good our other sports are Ooh. doing. I have Where sports the... here. Well, you basketball have basketball here. You have uh, where the Seattle has go? Seattle has SuperSonics went to Utah. Who did they become? Did they become like SuperSonics the... became some somebody? Oklahoma Thunder. Yeah, I think that's what it was. I don't recall. We'll yeah, have that to was look before it my time. No, but there's still a lot of ardent fans who wear supersonic gear here, and yeah, Sean if Kemp. they brought the NBA here again, Gary I Payton. think they would probably try to revive that, revive that franchise. You guys do have uh, hockey, though, right? They have a Kraken, like the Kraken. Is that what their name? The name of their Seattle Kraken. Kraken. That's Nets. our hockey team. They're named after an octopus, and they would probably have to do something like they did with them. Uh, an expansion draft where you see how many people are willing to put their money where their mouth is and get the team there. That would go well for Supersonics people. So how how has that new team been doing? It's great. great. Yeah. Are we? Is there a hockey stinger? I are already did it. Yeah, I did it. Yep. All right. We're, at, we're oh, hockey. That's why sorry. I'm I'm doing a nice, really good uh, transition there. My, and, my and, basketball uh, thoughts. But yeah, the Kraken are doing great. We just had a seven-game road streak, which was incredible. Uh, I think we have a good chance of the playoffs. We made some really good pickups this year, already scoring goals for us. And yeah, I think great team to watch. I'm having a lot of fun watching them. Uh, How did that game go down where they had almost as many goals as they did shots? I want to hear about that. Tell us about that. Regalus in the tail, the legend. Oh God, that was incredible. no one named Daniel Jones. Were you there? Was involved. No. Were you there? I wasn't there. No. Because you do. That have was tickets. on their turf. That was. I have to remember. Can you give me the matchup? I'll look it up we right now. You just start Blackhawks. Oh, Chica- Blackhawks. Chicago Blackhawks. Yep. Yeah. So the opening of the Blackhawks game was crazy. I tuned in, and it was one to one. All of a sudden, and this is all in the first period, the Kraken just score five goals. In, we checked, and it wasn't a record, but it was very fast. It was in under two minutes, I think. Under two minutes made That's six insane. out of seven shots. 
Yep. What was the and score? At that point, at the end of the game, it was eight to five. Eight to five the at the end period, of the game. It was six to one. The first period, six to one? Yeah. On yeah. seven shots. Seven shots, On six goals. seven shots. That goal and is not doing good at all. Had seven shots, one goal. Yeah, yeah. That, that. what was going on with your goalie? Yeah, I think it was Jones that day, and he was just on fire. Hmm. The crack and alternate between two goalies right now, Philip Grupauer and, oh gosh, is it David or Daniel Jones? I don't want to get it wrong. I think it's Uh-oh. Daniel Jones. <laughs> oh boy, it sounds like uh, sounds like our uh, the, the the Minnesota Wilds uh, uh, goalie it's Martin. Martin Jones. Sorry, Martin Jones. I was thinking about Daniel Jones for obvious reasons. <laughs> Still a Jones. Maybe they're related, right? The f- residual curse. Mm-hmm. The, I mean, I'm Eric, not bringing that juju on my goalie. No. Is Eric? Was that your? Uh, was that the Kraken's goalie that had seven? Seven scores off of six goals. No, that was the Blackhawks goalie. The Blackhawks goalie was doing the bad. Kraken scored set, okay. six on seven shots. Okay, a lot of. Okay, yeah. it, so that sounds like the Blackhawks goalie is not doing well, just like the Minnesota Wilds goalie Flurry, uh, because Flurry hasn't been looking good either. Have have they see those? Yeah, I tuned into a couple games this week uh, with my family in town, and we watched them. And when I saw the gold pads, I went, oh, boy, Flurry's in. Let's see how this goes. And they lost both games five goals to two and five goals to three. So we were had an uphill battle the whole time on those games. Yikes. Yeah. yeah. he's Our backup's way better than him right now, which is not expected. Not expected at all. And then that means that they – did you watch the last two games? Because they lost. Yes. They lost both of them. They lost both the last two games, oh, which no. puts them 25. Well, I mean, they're still in third place. Right? They, they won a bunch before that. So, I mean, they're still doing good. But it, Flurry's the reason they're losing games. Hmm. And like, we just picked him up. Is that correct? We had him last year, but we signed him for this year. We traded oh, for him last year. Guaranteed money? Uh, I think it is guaranteed. Oh man! So if we get rid of him, then we'll have to pay him. Then he'll go to paying him. Yeah, it is guaranteed because we're still paying Parisi and Suter, two ex players we had who play on other teams. Yeah, we still pay their contracts and are still we are capped. We can't pay the people we want to because we're still paying those two people. Oh boy! And then even and now this guy, and then and those teams guy. get that little windfall in their cap. They do. Oh boy! Is there yeah. a way for them to like declare like bankruptcy or something and say no? Nope, let's start over. <laughs> then we'd have to convince we, people we, to restructure. I don't know if they really could this declare up. bankruptcy in the cap situation. They just let, let us uh, restart here from scratch. Like they don't have. I think they like just that? have to sign people to the minimums. Yikes! That yeah. doesn't sound good. Oh, oh. no! Rough. Hmm. Well, There's a way to do it in Canadian hockey, but you have to go out onto a frozen pond and you hit a hole and you sink yourself down into the ice. And <laughs> then everybody's like, well, I guess he gets to start over. <laughs> Hasn't translated down here. <laughs> Not yet. Oh, yikes. So that's, uh, that's some scary news for the, for the wild. What are they going to do? Yep. What are they going to do if they don't have a goalie? Well, you need a goalie. They can stop slumping and. You know, keep on their their position. Yeah. Yeah. Baseball time, guys. Baseball Let's do it. is fun again in Minnesota. Or it's got a lot to talk about. Uh, there is a lot to talk about. Uh, let me do the thing. Um, baseball oh, yeah. is not fun again in Minnesota. Um, uh, do you guys know why? And we all say it's we don't play baseball, don't play baseball in the winter. winter. Too cold. Yeah, it's too cold. You know. Yeah, that's that's the joke. But like, there's snow everywhere. The real reason why baseball is not fun again in Minnesota is because they. I think I'm gonna cry. Yeah, I'm sad. They uh, they got rid of Luis Arise, the Major League Baseball best best hitter in Major League Baseball last year. Is that? His award that he got, American League he, batting champion. He got the, but his batting championship was better than the National League's too. So he was so the best hitter in baseball. Best hitter in baseball. Uh, they decided to 
He's he's played for the Twins for four years uh, now. Twenty nineteen, and was in, a, in the Twins prospect league as well. I got his signed. I have a signed card of his. Me too. And uh, so he's been with the Twins for quite a while. He played in his. Oh man, I. And they got rid of him. Uh, they moved him down, sent him down to not not sent him down because they didn't like move him down to like minor leagues or anything. They just got rid of him. They they traded for somebody for him for somebody else. And now he plays for a different team, and I think it's Tampa Bay. I don't My, even know. Miami Marlins. Miami Marlins. See, I don't even know. I don't even care because I'm, I miss him. <laughs> he should be a twin. He should always be a twin. Agreed. Yeah. Luis is a uh, is the best hitter in baseball and then also when i had my blood clot and i was laid up with uh my my leg almost killing me uh he i he like he made baseball fun again for me like he's Mm -hmm. he he's energetic and um makes goofy moves in the in the dugouts and the area in the in in the box when he's batter's backs and he's like he hugs people and he's a really nice guy and yeah, it's it's it, it's a sad it's just a sad day in Minnesota Minnesota sports. I think uh, getting rid of that guy. But, it's a bummer because they did it. They traded him because they wanted to get a good pitcher. Yes, because they didn't want to sign one, so they traded for one. But the only reason they picked a rise is because he was due to get paid soon, and they weren't going to pay him. Well, is that Par- partially? Is that the case? We also do have a backup of prospects, uh, infield, great infield prospects. Um, so just, it was tough to find a spot for him defensively, I think. You got a designated hitter then. Yeah. and You can sign all these also, people if you want to. They don't want to. They don't. Yeah. And... It is a big blow to the fandom because Luis Arise was absolutely everything you, you said he is. And, but, you know, uh, counterpoint, we have, what, uh, a couple episodes ago, we've talked about this as it was approaching. And, and man, I, I needed you to tell me, Fuzzy, <laughs> that... It, you got to look at the, you know, sell, sell him in his high value time. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a tough pill to swallow, but, yeah. but that helped me bring that into perspective to be like, yeah, you know, a rise could have more value to us, uh, to bring something in like a starting pitcher. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and I said that, but I didn't mean it. <laughs> yeah. You know, everybody was all about keeping them. So I'm like, well, you have to have a counterpoint for a podcast, yeah. right? Yeah. And so that's what I did. And I didn't mean it, but he must have listened to me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they were, they I, had I, listening. I had also well, I listened to you. I also had <laughs> mentioned that uh you know, who cares? Get rid of all the twins and let's let's start anew around Buxton and Korea and now that's what that that's what they're doing too. And also another thing that I could say too is we do need pitchers. And yep. yes, and you're you're absolutely right. Before we've talked about also Arise isn't the best defensive player. Sure, he's great at at, at hitting, but hitting's not everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I I like I I don't know. I'm I can be devil. I can be devil's advocate on either side of it. What I really feel is I wish we would have kept him. Yeah. I, you know? And that's a hard point to argue, I think, for any Twins fan. Uh, if if they get too analytical and want to, like, cover how he had the defensive weaknesses, this or that, um, man, they didn't really love the Twins. Right? What? I... <laughs> what? Who's saying I that just we wish... don't love the Twins? What's that? What was that? About no, I was not saying that the anyone who would argue uh, so so much about uh, Luis having defensive weaknesses or no uh. defensive home. 
and weigh that so hard against yeah his, against his everything personality, else. his hitting ability, right? Unprecedented hitting ability. How about this? Uh, Arise had a war of three point two. We all know what a war is. W A R wins above replacement. He had a three point two last year. Wins above replacement. Right? Is that what it is? Right. Yes. And what does yeah. that mean? If you put him out of the game and put someone else in, it's like the odds or how often they win or the positions point system, right, James? Yeah. Is it like it's like the measure of all all stats rolled into how much better you are than the average pro player? Well, kind of how how much his his ability lends to winning a game. Okay. So to to put it simply the war of 3.2 means like without a rise uh just like that season could be seen as having 3.2 less wins okay so like as in like so having him on our team equated to about 3.2 extra wins last year yes right it's a, um and then it's kind of like a good way to compare position players against pitchers and other players sometimes and so in, in ways yes and no so the, his WAR was three point two last year, and the pitcher that we got, who was uh, is two point eight. Hmm. So we got that too, but you know we got to move on at some point. So why not just move on now? Uh, Arise is gone, and yeah. it sucks. And but we're we're moving on to be better twins and uh, to win the World Series next year. And we got some new outfielders, didn't we, James? Well, I mean, we can say more about the pitcher we got. Yeah, we can. Do uh, we even say anything uh, about him? You know, we mentioned What's his, his war. Uh, Pablo Lopez, starting pitcher for the Miami Marlins, now with the Twins, uh, probably likely slotted second or third in our lineup or uh, rotation, but... Um, so we got to make sure not to hate on Pablo because it wasn't his decision yeah. to get rid of Arise, is what you're saying. No, right? and this is a very exciting... This is a very easy pitcher to get excited about. Okay. So tell um, It also helps that he, he... So we always get pitchers who had a good season like three years ago when we get someone. They're always past their time they were good. Yeah. He's still good. Okay. So that's, that's pretty rare for us. That's nice. Yeah, people so. will maybe point to a second half of his last season not being as great, but uh, putting up great numbers in the first half of the season. Also, a younger guy, like he's 25, 26. Okay. And we got him with another year of control. So he also has the record for most uh, strikeouts to start a game. He did. Oh, yes. He. he I don't remember who they were playing, but he went and did like nine straight strikeouts. Yep. Three full innings. Okay. Struck out every single batter for three full innings. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. The guy's in our rotation now. That's good, right? It is good. It is good. Our rotation is looking really solid, actually, for this year. Yeah, that's what we need is pitchers. I mean, we need pitchers. Way better than it's been the last couple of years. We got we got yeah. Buxton and we got Correa to do hitting. And, yep. and oh. we got uh, breaking news. Go ahead. Breaking news. Oh, this just in. Uh, well, a few hours ago. But today, the Twins have signed, not signed, they traded for outfielder Michael A. Taylor from the Kansas City Royals. Oh, Ooh. nice. And that was uh, as of today? That was as of today. Um, And the coolest thing I saw about this... Kansas that, City Royals. Wait, they aren't they a divisional opponent? Yeah. That's funny. That normally doesn't happen. We yeah. traded them two minor league pitchers. One of them was um And why does that, that not like, change, why does that not happen a whole lot, C dubs? You usually try to trade them into a division that you're not so you don't play against them. So you're saying you don't want that them to hurt your team. When you're trading yeah. a player, you you like to try to trade that player into a different division so then if not different league. Or different league. Oh, so yeah, yeah you better trade that uh, that player to the NHL from the MLB, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, I like that. Because you don't want to play against them. There might be animosity. So, oh, so did we trade a rise to uh, to uh, NFL team? 
<laughs> to Miami, yeah, Miami Dolphins. Okay. <coughs> Breb's excited Martins. about that. Go ahead, Jim. Anyway, um, Michael A. Taylor, center fielder. So that kind of puts maybe Kepler's position in question. Um, the, it looks like Kepler's Celestino, probably on the chopping block for sure. Yeah, I still think there's a big rumor that a trade's lining up for him. Uh, but then Celestino will likely be option, spending some more time with the Saints this year. Okay. And this is our backup center fielder. So it sounds like the, they're listening to my suggestion of let's just get rid of everybody and restart. Almost. 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 But here's a cool stat I found. Yeah. Uh, defensive runs saved since 2020. All outfielders. Okay. Number one, Michael A. Taylor. Oh, whoa. 36. Number two, Joey Gallo. Whoa. And we just got 32. him. 32. Yeah. And three is a three-way tie with Mookie Betts, Kyle Tucker, and Byron Buxton. What? Really? So we've got the top three? Yeah. Our, our defensive outfield depth is insane right now. Wow. That's incredible. Wow, that's amazing. So Thank defense, you, you know, Gallo. defense wins the championships. That's yeah. what they always say. No, it looks like the, the Twins have, you know, we've hit the starting pitcher. We've beefed up our rotation. We've shored up some more defense in the outfield. We got a great defensive uh, catcher in Vasquez. And I'm still excited to see what Farmer can do in the, you know, platooning here and there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, good. We look good. Oh, you and don't twins know, rosters know really what that sound means. Well, the oh, question of the month. Jingle is. Or, it's well, time for the fuzz question of the week. Of the week. So this is the fuzz. Time is just really strange to me lately because I, you know, lost yeah. the game and the time's been changing weird for me. Fuzz question of the week is uh, the time that I ask the bre- uh, the brebs, all the brebs. <laughs> The beloved regulars, Eric Blakes. Yes. <laughs> Eric Blakes. Uh, this is when I ask them a question, and they answer a question with an answer. And it's their opinion, and their opinion is sometimes correct and sometimes it's wrong. And we won't talk about why it's incorrect or wrong because we don't want to make people feel bad. We just uh, listen to their answer, and then we move on. Right? Mm-hmm. Does that mean? I'm sorry. That was kind of we'll mean. No. <laughs> we'll <see. laughs> we'll <see. laughs> Copacetic. We'll see. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I thought it was funny. Uh, the fuzz question of the week is because you know it's funny because you know you don't know if the, <laughs> if if I think or if the other people think that their answer is you know correct or not and it's their but it's their opinion so there isn't really a, a correct or incorrect answer right that's what's funny about this we all know what okay. that sound means you guys can't oh, hear the topic Sandra, is, or can you it's time for the fuzz question of the week Okay, so the fuzz question of the week this week is the saying goes defenses win championships. Do you think that is true? C dubs. No. Jamez. Yeah. And Breb. Nah. And that was your <laughs> fuzz question of the week. That was the fuzz question of the week. Okay, so moving on. I was lying just now. Is that <laughs> all? Take, no, elaborate. No, no. Is that all the baseball news, guys? Do we have any more, James? Do you have any well, more? Well, I can. I. I'd put a pin in it just because I have more to say about upcoming roster, and I have excitement over it. Yeah, I can go on, but we'll pin it. Yeah, I mean, pin. we have a lot of off season. A lot of off season. Yeah to talk oh, about spring the, training the twins oh the the yeah. spring training is coming up that's gonna be a lot of exciting news and since the vikings aren't doing anything anymore it doesn't even matter right mm, right uh, and i mean we got the timberwolves and the wild still to cover and 
we'll have a lot more news for them too. It's going to be great. It's going to be a wonderful uh, season coming up. Last half of oh yeah this season, right? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Okay, so then let's move on to other topics, right? Okay. Here's the topic sounder for that, guys. So just so you know, I'm playing it. Super Smash Brothers. Jamez, did you have any new news in Super Smash Brothers, Brab? Do you have any Super uh, Smash Brothers? The first Brothers news? Super Major of the season just happened this weekend. Oh, it did. Yeah, Genesis, uh, maybe eight or nine. I forget how many they've had. Okay. Yeah, that's good. And uh, it, yeah. it, it went well, I'm assuming. Oh, yeah, it was a big deal. Okay. Uh, and... I think one of the top players, Mango. Uh, got a little salty over ranks and seating and ended up dropping out of singles. As Mango wow. would, right? Man, yeah, he would. Uh, That's so Mango. Yeah. How, but how's our some... Yoshi player? Oh, our Yoshi player, I believe he took fourth or fifth. So okay. he kind of got upset. Okay, cool. I mean, not like angry upset, but upset by yeah. losing to... <laughs> yes. Um, the big news that came out of the tournament was that our first place player is, uh, I think, a New York player named Jay Mook. Mm-hmm. And he, last year he wasn't even ranked, and this year he has won a super major. Whoa. That seems to happen quite often. Does, does it yep. not? That somebody that is just comes out of, out of the woodworks and just is like, bam, I'm going to do well? Or am I, am I wrong? Uh, no, I think that happens in some other games, but uh, with Melee, it's been out for 20 years, and you really don't see that happen. Oh, you don't see that happen? Okay. In that Melee a lot. Huh. Well, then that's good for him. Like He's yeah. just a phenom, huh? Yeah, super fresh player, they yeah. call him. He's, he's super, he's the freshest. Is he doing specific moves that, or move sets that catch people off guard or something? Or um, maybe... No, he just plays a really yeah, good character good. and does it really well and plays really fast. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Has great fundamentals. <laughs> He's the Larry Bird of Smash yeah. Brothers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah was, it's a nice little shake up in the, the top players to, to have some fresh fresh players at the top. Cool. So that's fun. Uh, in AEW ROH news, ROH is uh, AEW's All Elite Wrestling, a promotion, and ROH, a Ring of Honor, is also a pro- professional wrestling organization like AEW and WWE and Impact and uh, whatnot. And ROH just recently had been purchased by Tony Khan, who's the owner of AEW, so Tony Khan now owns both AEW and ROH. And uh, ROH is a different uh, professional wrestling organization that has a lot of wrestlers wrestling under their promotion. And one of their uh, tag team uh, wrestlers, the um, the Briscoe brothers, have been part of ROH for over 20 years. Yeah. Right? And unfortunately, after our cast last week, uh, we, it was brought to our attention that uh, Jay Briscoe, the bro- uh, the older brother of I think so of the Briscoe brothers, uh, passed away in a uh, head-on car crash. Uh, he had his two daughters in the car with him. They were transported. To the hospital in critical condition they're doing better now it sounds like mm-hmm. uh, and unfortunately jay uh, uh died at the scene that's so sad he's such a he had so much heart he you when you watch jay briscoe or just the briscoe brothers in general wrestle they're giving it their all and by that i mean like their body their mind everything for our entertainment and they really loved what they did. And so it's sad to see someone like that go. Yeah, and it's really sad to hear that someone like him uh, went as well because uh, everybody that talks about him and like all the wrestlers and the announcers that uh, they, they talk about the Briscoe brothers and they say that he was a 
just a wonderful person uh, behind the scenes. Like he and his brother play a character characters that are really burly, uh, really s- aggressive, wild, wild boys, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, dem boys, you know, they're they're dem boys. They're they're the they're hauling you know shotguns in their trunks of their cars, and they're 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 gonna get you if you if you cross their family, you know, those type of guys and. Mm-hmm. Uh, really scary, scary characters on uh, in the ring, and get really, really bloody. And but it sounds like outside the ring, just two of the wonderful, most wonderful people that you could ever meet. Family men too. And yeah, well, they got family, and yeah, unfortunately, uh, I he and also the twenty. He was only thirty eight years old. As well, and then the driver of the other vehicle was only twenty. She was only twenty-seven, and so it was just, just sad. Really sad. Really sad news. Uh, so if you get a chance, make sure to um, go to YouTube. All their a lot of their wrestling is on on YouTube. R O H, uh, d- um, the Briscoe brothers. There, there were there were something. There's something else to watch. Um, you guys gotta want to move on to the end. Yeah. Uh, memory time. Oh, was great. there anything else? How does this song go good? Oh yeah. Memory. Trivia. 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 This is a fuzzy memory trivia time. Uh, this is when I ask the Hess questions, and there is only one answer. There are no opinion answers. There are no um, wrong. Uh, there are wrong answers if you say the wrong answer, right? Mm-hmm. If you if you get the answer correct, you get a point. If you get the They've answer been us. wrong, you get zero points. You don't get negative points. You just get zero points. And I just keep every time I bring this up or say that I always think about points and like zero and one like a zero like you get zero points is that the right way to say that because getting zero points is really not getting any points is 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 zero a point you had zero to your total we didn't zero come a long time into the numbers existing oh i i I think breb got it there breb's like you're adding zero a zero point and so it's like one plus zero plus one because like this question got one point this question got zero points this question got one point if you're visualizing it with me i hope um or like if i get if i have one point and then i get it wrong well you you put a zero on there and i have 10 points yeah wait a minute oh yeah I, i get that i understand that that. however you can do that way if you want the score is zero 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 all zeros. All zeros. So if I get one point, I could have a thousand. That's <laughs> one zero zero zero. That's uh, I just have to claim those zeros. That's that's interesting. That's an interesting way to we'll do that. We'll see about that. We'll uh, ask the judges maybe later on if I can remember. Yeah. Um, you guys ready? Yep. Yeah. Ready. How many NBA championships did Michael Jordan win with the Chicago Bulls? Six. See Four. those? Six. Which is the only American football team to go a whole season undefeated, including the Super Bowl? Miami Dolphins. My- <laughs> Breb, point. Which is the only team to play in every soccer World Cup? Brazil. Correct. One point, JMS. Whoa! There we go. One, one, one. That's the end of Fuzz Number Trivia. Perfect it's trivia. It's all tied wow. up in one. Perfect oh, yeah. trivia uh, game. No winners. Wow. I can't believe it, guys. <laughs> that was amazing. 100% completion percentage. Oh, that, that was, was awesome. We're sports guys. Yeah. Yeah, we're so, geniuses. We are the, the best experts. Sport. The uh, score is now 1-1-1. One, one, one. And uh, that just makes me so happy, to be honest. 
I'm glad that it worked out that way, guys. Um, Does your arm hurt from lobbing those softballs? <laughs> <laughs> those are hard, okay? It's not like we had those be questions guys, before. You know what? Uh, so that brings us to the end of the episode, guys. Is there anything that I was glossed over or forgot to bring up, or did I give everybody enough space here? Did you need to say anything else you need to say? Yeah, yeah. All I, I gotta get... say is I love you all. I'm glad we do this. That's what I want to say. Okay, so love you all. Call your mother. <laughs> okay, okay. Whose mother? Your mother. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, I've never done that joke. Uh, okay. <laughs> so if we didn't have any other things going on, uh, that brings us. Uh, how's it going, guys? What's what's how does your week look? Uh, uh, James, what do you what do you got playing for the next week? Oh, well, uh, I'm going to try to keep myself from not slumping into the winter blues uh trying to get some more music going on around me i've got some multi-tracks that i've been digging through and uh editing and mixing some old stuff and nice that's really really fun and you can find those links in the fuzz talk radio uh discord for some new releases from you yeah uh, pretty soon pretty, pretty soon. soon sweet uh c-dubs what do you got going on for this next week? How you doing? What's going on? I'm still working at 6 a.m., so I've been tired all the time. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's really tired. I'll have to go to bed immediately that's after really this. really early. Really early. Breb? Well, my parents will be in town for a few more days, so that's nice, too. Oh, well, that's so nice. that's my week. Yeah. Breb, uh, it was great to have you this week. Uh, I'm remembering to uh, thank the Hest <laughs> coming to the show, unlike I did in the last couple times. Oops. Uh, well, thank you so much for having me. And on behalf of all the guests you didn't thank, I'm sure they were very appreciative as well. Yeah. And you will accept this award. Yeah. Do you want to accept this award? Yeah. Ooh. Have an award. Yeah. Here's an award for being. Ooh. It's lowering from the ceiling. For being our breast oh. breb. Thank you. Oh. Fog machine is. <coughs> There's a lot of fog. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it weighs a bit. I don't know if I can fit it in my apartment. Well. Well, I'll ship it down to your uh, don't ship mother's it to sisters. Me. Don't ship it to child. me. Child. Wherever you're going to send it, don't ship it to me. I'll take it. Hey, Fuzzy. Yeah. Hey, I hope that you uh, get on the mend. You can be for us on both sides of the ball when it comes to what it's about. But, but also, you start with Jeff. I feel like that this year, what have you noticed from him in terms of becoming a common side of